Good morning, everyone. My name is Shalice Nicole Hurd, and I actually am the CEO of ShaliceNicoleHurd.com and AutisticTravelGoddess.com. So I want to talk to you guys today about how I use my autism symptoms and my autism strengths to create a path for myself. And this was a long story, actually. I grew up being told when I was diagnosed with autism, I was diagnosed at the age of two. And throughout my life, I always had difficulty relating to people in the neurotypical fashion, in the fashion that most people are used to relating to one another. I didn't quite understand and pick up on social cues that most people were able to. And as a result, my occupational options tended to be different than most of my peers. So because of that, I obviously had weaknesses in certain teamwork aspects and certain um, like social skills and visual cues and intuition and things of that nature. So those are my weaknesses because of the fact that I have autism and those are the symptoms that come with autism. In my case, that's how I manifested autism. So because of that, I always grew up knowing that I was different than the rest of the world. I was different than other people. And it was made painfully aware to me that I was different because of the fact that I grew up, when I was in high school, I got bullied a lot and I always was told that there was something different about me. And even my parents growing up would always tell me that I would have to do something different because of the fact that I didn't quite fit in with other people. And it led me to the painful realization when I was out of college back in 2012, I actually graduated with my bachelor's and I was looking for employment. And here I am thinking that, you know, like I have my degree, I'm going to get a good job. I'm going to get, you know, successful as other people in my age group. And that didn't happen because of the fact that Certain things about my autism set me apart from the rest of the, my peers who were able to get employment. Hi. So that's what made me have to actually create my own career path. Like it became obvious to me that I had to create my own career path. And then I have special interests as well. I actually am very fascinated with geography. I love to travel. And I also have unique social skills where I say things in a way that most people can't relate to. And so that is what made me discover the fact that, and consider the fact that maybe I should consider entrepreneurship. So that being said, I decided to go into, start my own business two years ago. I decided to start my own YouTube channel where I travel and indulge in my special interest to travel. And I decided to actually go into coaching other people with autism because one of the reasons that I went into autism coaching is because I grew up being misunderstood. I grew up wanting someone to advocate for me and wanting someone to stand up for me. And I became very obsessed and very passionate about studying autism and studying how to help other people with autism and actually understanding myself and why I had autism and how it manifested in myself. And it became a lifelong fascination for me when I was in college and I studied, you know, psychology and sociology and that's what made me decide to go on a career of autism coaching and combining my special interests with travel together. So I just want to let everyone know that just like I took my weaknesses and I took my, what the society perceives as flaws, I took those and I made them into strengths to put into my, into my career goals, into my business and into my YouTube channel and just my passions in life. So I enjoy going around telling everyone, you know, you can be autistic, you can travel, you can make money, you can live the life that you want to live. So two years ago, I got my master's degree in public health and I was, I kind of wandered in entre wandered into entrepreneurship in the sense that I bought a car the previous semester before I graduated. I bought a car and I had buyer's remorse when I bought the car and so I actually was up all night one night trying to figure out how I was going to, you know, pay for the car, how I was going to avoid feeling the sting of the purchase that I just made. And so I went online and I discovered this way of renting my car, actually. I rented it out on Turo and at first I did not believe in it. I thought it was a load of, I thought, I thought it was ridiculous at first to rent, my, rent out your car. And so like, I tried it because it was at the point now where the payments were due and I had to do something to make myself feel less regretful of my purchase. And so I put the car on the listing and I started making money. I started to actually um, get my first customers after two days. And 
at first I didn't think this was going to make any money, but I started to see the, the payments coming in. Before you know it, I actually made the payments and I, I even had extra profit left over after, you know, making the car payments every month. So that's how I kind of stum stumbled into um, entrepreneurship. And I eventually developed my own system to where I don't really have to deal with difficult personalities. I don't really have to put myself in a stressful situation that compromises who I am. So, and then I discovered that that, is a freedom of passive income. And so I use it to be able to travel. I actually use the money that I earn after making the payments to fund my travels and to actually live on. And so that particular summer, when I started renting out the car, I took my first trip to Vancouver, Canada. I took my first um, independent solo travel trip to, to Vancouver. And then I went to Hawaii. I went to um, Boston, which is in the Northeast of the United States. So that allowed me to travel and it allowed me to create the freedom that I wanted and it allowed me to understand business and to understand, you know, how to deal with customers, how to price your product and, you know, basically how to, to automate your system so that you can make money without, you know, compromising who you are and without feeling like you have to fit in with the world in order to make money. Like that was the first time in my life that I realized what my dreams were and the fact that my dreams are so possible that I could work with who I want to work with, I can choose the environment I want to be in, and I can still make a living. And that, that it took me so long to accept the fact that it was so easy to do that. Like Because most of the time we're taught that everything has to be so hard. We're taught that everything has to be difficult and stressful. And that was the first time in my life that I experienced my being so close to my dreams. And it was all due to the fact that I thought outside the box and I used my weaknesses for fitting in with the crowd to my advantage and I did something that was outside of the box. And I was able to create a lifestyle for myself that most of my peers envied actually. And the thing about it is like renting out this car, like it sounds bizarre to some people, but it also opened a lot of doors for me because I had more time to pursue my passions. I had more time to actually decide who I wanted to work with, who I wanted to help. And, you know, the lifestyle I wanted to create. And it just opened up this freedom for me, taking care of my health and all sorts of things, too. Like, it opened so many doors for me. Like, just that one car situation where I had buyer's remorse, like, actually turned out to be a blessing. And it turned out to be the way that I entered into making a life for myself that fit into the goals because prior to that, I didn't think it was possible. Prior to that, I thought I was just going to have to suck it up and try to fit into the box and try to hide having autism just to work a nine to five, just like the rest of my peers. So that is the story as to how I got into entrepreneurship. And now a days I still do rent out the car. However, I was able to take coaching courses. I was able to take, um, traveling, and I go around and I show everyone how to travel through the autistic perspective, like the things that you need to learn in order to go overseas, stuff you need to consider, the way the thought process works, um, and just the perception from somebody on the autism spectrum, like how they can pay attention to details while they're on their trips. And I can reach so many people that way. I can actually help inspire so many people to travel and to live their lives and to think outside the box and to not feel bad. The most important thing I want you to take away from this is please do not feel bad if you don't fit into the nine to five mode, if you don't fit into, you know, what your parents' dreams were for you. Like my parents dreamt that I would have a good job when I grew up, a nine to five, good benefits. And it didn't work out that way. And don't feel bad if it doesn't work out for you. Don't feel bad for being different, thinking outside the box. Don't ever feel bad about that. Take that as a strength and use it to your advantage. Even if you have to sit up all night like I did looking at solutions, like it's a, it's a way to make it happen. I want you to understand that. So I want you to take away that and also want you to take the time to consider what is it that, so what's your weakness? What is it that you absolutely cannot deal with? Something that, you know, you can't interpret, something that you can't, fathom that makes you different from the rest of the world and instead of thinking about it as a weakness instead of thinking about it as something that's a hindrance think about how you could turn that into something that's a strength like think about in the ways that you could make that a strength the ways that you can make that work that to your advantage and create the dream that you want to create i encourage you guys to think about that today 
Thank you so much for having me speak here. And I really enjoyed having this talk with you guys. And I hope to see and hear your comments soon.